Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is floor. F L O O R. Rally. You bet your life. <laughs> More than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America present Groucho Marx and You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is, the one, the only... Groucho! Oh, come now. Oh, that's me! <laughs> well, here I am again with $1,000 for one of our couples. We invited some dietitians to the program tonight, Groucho, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Miss Jean Granger. Her partner is a volunteer from the audience, Mr. James Barrows. Folks, come on in and meet Groucho Marx. Over here, sir, please. <laughs> right in here. Right here. Pleased to meet you. Well, welcome, welcome. Thank you, thank you. Welcome to the South <laughs> Plymouth Dealers. Say, say, the, say the secret word and divide a hundred bucks. Thousand dollars, hundred dollars. It's a common word, something you find around the house. <laughs> what were you planning to do, go home already? Uh, it's very really, really confusing, you know. I, I'm a gold bug. You know, I got I the gold fever. I don't care what you got, but don't sneak out of here before I get a crack at you. <laughs> James Barrows, eh? What is your hometown, Mr. Barrows? Boston, Massachusetts. Well, it's a great town. Eh? Somebody out there from Holyoke. <laughs> I've been in Boston many times. Which part of Boston are you from? Roxbury, Massachusetts. Roxbury, yeah. And four blocks from John L. Sullivan, the world's greatest fighter. My mother's name was Sullivan, and I'm proud of the Irish. And every second kid about John L. Sullivan didn't say a good word for John L. Sullivan, they had to answer to James A. Barrows. That's hard to believe. Mr. Barrows, of course you realize that John L. Sullivan's been dead about 40 years. Huh? Yes, sir. But I still... Are you aware of that? Yes, but I still got the Sullivan in me. I see, huh? And well, get it out before we get through it. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Granger, what sort of a dietitian are you? I work for the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power. Oh, you just mm -hmm. uh, feed water to people? And, uh, <laughs> is that what you do? Oh, no, we do much more than well, that. What does a dietitian do? We're interested do? in uh, people's eating habits. Oh, I see. What would you say is the chief dietary problem that people are uh, confronted with? I think weight is. Mm -hmm. What do you recommend for people who are overweight? Well, of course, I recommend a good diet. Mm -hmm. And I certainly uh, would like to warn people to keep away from fad diets. Fat diets? Fad diets. There are so many fad diets. I don't diets. hear very well. My glasses are not what they used to be. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you regard as a, a fad diet? Oh, there are lots of them. They're very popular, in fact. Uh, let's see. There's lamb chops and pineapple. Or there's an orange diet, or a banana diet, or a peanut diet. There are all kinds of diets. Peanuts? Yes. You mean you can lose weight just by eating peanuts? Well, some people think they can. I don't believe it. <laughs> Did you ever look at an elephant? <laughs> <laughs> now, Mr. Barrows, what sort of work do you do? I'm a gold sniper. Is that anything like cigar? <laughs> what's, a, what's a gold sniper? Well, a gold sniper is when you get the gold bar. You get the gold fever, see? He starts out for the gold fields and gets a couple of big nuggets, you know. And, and uh, this is the year 1952, but I still think I'm a 49er. It's hard to believe. You mean 1949 or 1849? 1849, because of what anybody says, I still believe that myself. Uh -huh. Because when I go out to look for these gold nuggets, I find them pretty big. And I really believe that's all I see is gold, gold, gold. Now, that's hard to believe, and the more I look at them, the bigger they get. And I tell everybody, don't get the gold fever. I give them a bite, but they don't take it. What can I do about it? That's hard to believe. Well, it's certainly hard to believe, all right. <laughs> and there's really not much you can do about it. No, but I give them a bite not to get the gold fever. And some will take it serious. They want to take off. Professors and congressmen and judges, and I talk to all kinds of people, they want to take off. I say, no, 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 take it easy. Not that big, and no. Calm them down, but they go and look for they, they can't blame me for the gold rush. I nearly started five gold rushes in California. And I don't want to start no more. It's hard to believe. Where do you meet these congressmen? Oh, sometime I'm hitchhiking with my gold pan across the Mojave Desert or something like that. You see, my, I got money in my pocket. I start with the gold fields, but before I know it, I see Harold's Club, Reno. Boom, I come up there, and well, I make it pretty good, and sometime I come back, and then I start for Las Vegas, and I bump into the Mojave Junction, get that Scotty's place, like in Coyote Road, Curtis Street, the Sutter River, the Yuba River, the Snake River, Idaho, Calvert, Colorado County. Nugget, 75 pounds. See? Well, come on, I'll go with you. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> 
said, don't get a Wait a minute. I got it as bad as you got it. Wait a minute. I can't stand it any longer. I can't believe I know it. Sitting here eking out these few bucks here when I could be hitchhiking with a pan of gold. <laughs> I'm only human too, you know. Yes, yes. Don't get the gold fever, please. Well, I've, I've got it. <laughs> I haven't got the intelligence, but the most intelligent people in the world. When I talk about the big nuggets, gee, I mean, you really got them. I says, well, I got a suitcase full of rocks. I carried along one. And you I, had the suitcase with yeah, you, huh? Yeah, full of rocks, you know, yeah, seventy-five right? pound gold nuggets. You got rocks in your yeah. suitcase. Maybe that explains well, everything. Well, right? every, every, every place he comes in, on the Feather River, the Yuba River, Dead Valley, Junction, Coyote, Well, Furnace, Cricker, Goldfield, Nevada, or Tuna Pond, Nevada, wherever it happened to be. Well, Jim, this has been very innovating, the whole thing. And I, 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 I must say it's been an, an interesting experience talking to you. And, and I still uh, got the gold fever. Don't well, think I ate. let's go. Here we go again. <laughs> you're going to see me yet on the highways and the byways uh, with that gold pad? I, I hope so, Jim. Yeah, and I hope you're very successful paid. and have a big strike someday, yeah? Good I hope you win lots of money tonight because in just one minute you're going to play your bet your life for a chance at the $1,000 question. But first, I want you to pay attention to this. Friends, when you drive, it's important that you have a clear view of the road ahead. This is especially true in wet, rainy, or stormy weather. That's why DeSoto is equipped with electric windshield wipers for your safety. You see, ordinary windshield wipers slow down or stop whenever extra acceleration is used. But electric windshield wipers maintain a constant, steady speed, regardless of engine load. This means that even in a situation that requires extra acceleration... Your powerful DeSoto electric windshield wipers will maintain their same steady, reliable clearing action. Never slow down or stop. In a DeSoto, you can pass a car on a straightaway or climb the steepest hill, assured that your electric windshield wipers will keep working to give you a clear view of the road ahead. DeSoto electric windshield wipers are just one of the many safety features you get when you buy DeSoto. Features like DeSoto safety rim wheels, that materially reduce the danger of loss of control after a blowout. Big DeSoto 12-inch brakes. And wonderful DeSoto full power steering that gives you safer, surer road control. Stop in at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers tomorrow and see the car designed for your safety, DeSoto. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth, the low-priced car most like high-priced cars. All right, uh, now that's nice and quiet. Let's see how you work together as a team. Uh, Fire Dome Fenneman? Yes, sir. Would you mind explaining the, the rules here? Well, you bet as much of your $20 as you want on each of four questions, and the couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question at the end of the show. You ready? Ready? Okay. Here we go. Let's see how high you can build your $20. From our list of 20 categories, you selected number 13 of IE as your category. How much of the 20 are you going to bet? Talk right up, kid. Fifteen dollars. Fifteen dollars. The largest active volcano in the world is on the island of Hawaii. What is the name of it? It's it's in Honolulu. I think it's Mauna Loa. Mauna Loa. Yeah, Mauna Loa right. is right. Right. Well, I ain't never been there. Now remember, you're going for a thousand dollars tonight. Now, how much of the thirty-five dollars you're going to try this time? Twenty-five. All right, twenty-five. 25. All right. What do you call a feast done in the native style? A luau. A luau is correct. Now you have $60. Here's your third question. How much of the 60 will you risk? Ooh, 45? All right, 45. All right, what do they call the garlands or necklaces of native flowers that are joined together? Lays. Lays is correct. You now have $105. And is your last chance to beat the other couples? How much of this money will you try? What do you think? $95. Uh, 95? 95. 95. One of Hawaii's most beautiful beaches commands a good view of the famous diamond head. What is the name of this beach? Wackakee. Wackakee is correct. <laughs> and you wind Thank up you. with $200. You. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Groucho, we invited some hotel men. Well, now, but... maybe I'll get a chance to talk. <laughs> <huh>? <laughs> Roger, we invited some hotel men to the program tonight. I didn't know there was any man could out-talk me. <laughs> we invited some hotel men to the program tonight. I see. And just before we went in the air, our studio audience selected Mr. Herb Lopier. His partner is a young lady from the audience, uh, Miss Olivia Eastus. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. 
Welcome, welcome to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide a hundred dollars. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Olivia Eastus, huh? That's you, huh? That's right. And Mr. Lopez? Yeah, that's right. Uh, Olivia, where are you from? Abilene, Texas. Abilene, Texas? I thought that was a cold cream, huh? <laughs> I know Eastus is Eastus, but I didn't know Eastus was in Texas. Huh? Well, that takes care of that. Now, uh... <laughs> that's kind of a curious name. What kind of a name is Eastus? It's a Welsh name. Welsh? Yes, it's oh. a... Do you sing uh, the Welsh songs? The... Um, yes, I can, but I want to tell you about the name. Well, I wish you would. Eh? Well, it's about... As long uh... as you don't discuss gold mining, I'll be very happy. <laughs> happy to listen to anything you have to say. Well, Talking it's about... to Mr. Eastus is like a week in the country. <laughs> it's about 1,100 years old. Well, you don't look that old. Eh? <laughs> And uh, Mr. Lopez, you're the hotel man, eh? That's right. Where are you from? Uh, I'm from the uh, city of good neighbors, Buffalo, New York. Are you married, Olivia? No. Not quite certain, are you? <laughs> Have you ever come close to marriage? Well, I was engaged once, mm -hmm. but... Uh, Just once? Well, the last time. I see. <laughs> but... Uh, what happened? Well, um... Uh, my fiancé kicked my Siamese cat, and I gave him back the ring. Now, that's the truth. <laughs> you gave the ring to the cat? No, I gave the ring back to my fiancé because I didn't know before he might start kicking me after we were married. I've heard of puss in boots, but this is the first time I've ever heard of a boot in a puss. <laughs> Now, let's talk about your hotel. Wh which one are you with? Uh... I'm with the Statler. Oh, that's a fine hotel. I've stayed there many times. How come I've never seen you there? Well, uh, what city were you in? We're in eight cities. And... Well, this one was in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Is that the one you're with? <laughs> well, we don't have any hotel in Cheyenne. I don't know who to believe, you or my crooked bathtub. <laughs> so say you have no hotel in Cheyenne? No, no. And which one do you work for? Well, I work for the new Statler in Los Angeles. Oh, I stayed there last March. I must say, your service was terrible and the rooms were drafty. <laughs> now, I felt such a breeze now. Are you responsible for that? Well, hardly. The hotel wasn't built then. It wasn't completed. It wasn't finished, did No. You? Well, any hotel that'll take me in is finished. <laughs> well, tell us something about this hotel. I've been reading about it in the papers. How does it differ from uh, any other hotel? Well, the hotel is 13 stories high. It's five wings. And in the hotel, there are 1,275 rooms, and they're all outside. <laughs> well, when I want to sleep in the park, I don't have to register your hotel. <laughs> and, uh... I'm not sure I don't like the old-fashioned hotels better. <laughs> Ah, oh, that one in Cheyenne, Wyoming was a good one. Gold nuggets all over the lobby. <laughs> Trouble is, you had to stoop down to pick them up. Huh? What else is different about it? Well, the keyhole is uh, in the door. Now you're talking, huh? <laughs> what about it's the keyhole? above the doorknob. What's that? It's above the doorknob. The which keyhole is... is above the doorknob? Oh, yes, absolutely. It's a convenience uh, You regard that as an advantage to have the keyhole above? Oh, absolutely. I used to bump my head on the door now, but this time I'll knock my teeth out. <laughs> I'm off to Cheyenne in the warm morning, huh? <laughs> well, it's been, it's been restful talking to you two, and, uh, <laughs> and I, I wish you both lots of luck in the quiz. By the way, take a tip from me and drive the new DeSoto Fire Dome 8. It's really a great car. Now, uh... We're going to play You Bet Your Life for $1,000. All you got to do is beat our other couples. You get a chance at the $1,000 question. I can't tell you how much you have to win, but Fire Dome Fenneman is going to remind our listeners. The gold prospector and his partner won $200. The secret word is floor. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected famous United States athletes. Here's your first question. How much will you bet? Talk up, kids. Fifteen dollars. Fifteen. Fifteen. In what sport is Patty Berg famous? Golf. Golf. Galoloff is right. 
Well, you're off to a good start. You have thirty-five dollars. Let me go in for a thousand dollars tonight. How much of the thirty-five dollars will you try now? Thirty-four ninety-nine. We'll leave one penny. <laughs> Is that all right with you? Uh, Is that Make all right? it ninety-eight. Ninety-eight. It's up to you. You go well, ahead. Uh, uh, Thirty-four ninety-nine is all right. Ninety-nine. We'll leave one. Pick. Thirty-four ninety-nine. Mm -hmm. In what sport is Cecil Smith famous? C E C I L. Is it? Building. Hmm. Building. Mm. Pretty sure. Come on, bowling. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. He's a very famous polo player. How much have they got? One cent. So you should have bet uh, thirty-four ninety-eight. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's your third question. How much of the penny are you going to bet? All of it. All of it, eh? <laughs> and what sport is Ralph Branca famous? Baseball. Baseball is right. Now you got two cents. <laughs> See, I can figure this out, too. Now they have two cents. Here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the two cents will you bet? Sure. In what sport is Willie Hoppy famous? Uh, he's a billiard champion. Billiard champion is right. Groucho, they wind up with four cents. Nobody so. leaves here with four cents. I'll give you one more question. You get this out, and we'll bring your winnings up to $25. Are you ready? Who was buried in Grant's tomb? <laughs> General Grant. General Grant is right. <laughs> huh? Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. We have a couple of volunteers from our studio yes. audience, Groucho. They were selected just before we went on the air, and here they are, Miss Carol Marie Lavique and Mr. Terrence Patrick O'Brien. Meet Groucho Marx. Welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. Right. <laughs> Say the secret word, and you'll win $100. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Miss uh, Carol Lavique and Mr. Terrence uh, Patrick O'Brien. <laughs> Carol, what kind of a name is Lavique? It's Lavec. It's a French it's name. It's Lavec. What kind of a name is Lavec? <laughs> It's a French name. What part of France are you from? Oh, I was born in Hollywood Hospital. <laughs> Is that in Paris? No, it's in Hollywood. Just checking. You know. How long ago did uh, go to this happen? Nineteen years ago. Nineteen years ago. Are well, you a fine-looking girl, there, Carol? Thank you. Mr. Terence Patrick O'Brien, eh? What part of France are you from, Monsieur? <laughs> No, I, I was born in Washington, D.C. You, come, my, you uh, come from an old Washington family? My uh, ancestors, uh, they came from County Clare and County Cork, Ireland. So I guess that makes me, my, makes me an Irishman, I guess. About, about like Patty's pig, I don't know. <laughs> Are you married, Terry? I sure am, Groucho. Mm -hmm. I'm married. Did you marry them? <laughs> Did you marry a little Irish, Colleen? No, I'm sorry you asked me that. I, uh, I was supposed to marry an Irish girl, but I wound up marrying a Scotch girl. I, I don't know how that happened. <laughs> I uh, changed the name, though. I made her... I call her Dugan now. Everybody calls her Dugan. Mm -hmm. Even her father calls her Dugan. So, uh, but she's still Scotch, huh? Well, yes, yes, she sure is. <laughs> well, everybody gets tough breaks. There's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> how did you meet this fabulous Mrs. O'Brien? Well, I was a short order cook in the uh, restaurant there, and she used to come in and Where eat. Where was this? In Washington, D.C. Oh. And she'd come in and eat, and uh, generally she'd wind up eating about $8 worth of chow, and I'd charge her a nickel, and so she liked me. Yeah. <laughs> How long did you work at this place? A couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's easy to understand. <laughs> How soon after you pauperized this proprietor did you ask her to marry you? Well, as it turned out, we had a date there, the very first date, and uh, we went up to Pat Carrigan's bar, a little place he used to go to, and drinking kissable colas, and she asked me to marry Wait, her. What's a kissable cola? What's a kissable cola? Well, I don't know, but you wind up getting married if you drink too many. <laughs> well, thanks for the warning, Pat. Uh, now, after you left your job as a cook, uh, what sort of work did you engage in? Well, I, I found out from my wife that her uh, father was pretty well loaded. You know, he was... Uh, was a... he taking these kissable callers, too? <laughs> well, anyhow, there was your father loaded, and what happened? 
Well, he was a pretty good old duck, or he seemed like it, and he had seven trucks and a nice business. Not so loud. This duck listens to every word you say. <laughs> and uh, so I, uh, I told him that uh, perhaps he'd like to give his son-in-law, you know, a job as a general manager or something like that. <laughs> but uh, he said his business was in too good shape to let me have any... <laughs> He made me a truck driver, yeah. I was a truck driver. He made you a truck driver? I was a truck driver. And what'd you do with this truck driver? Well, I, I did pretty well there for a while. Oh, no, you were the truck driver, huh? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. I thought you said he made you a truck driver. I wonder. <laughs> I worked for him for several weeks, and then I asked him about this general manager's job, and it wasn't coming, so I, I quit. No point in no, staying too long. I think it's silly to stay in any job where you're not general manager. <laughs> well, what happened after that? Well, I found out from my wife that her grandfather was pretty well loaded, too. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he was the general superintendent of all the mines in Alabama. You know, there's an awful lot of mines in Alabama. Yeah. And I said that maybe uh, he could use a general manager or vice president or something. He, uh, he told me... Why don't me you that... throw your hat in the ring for president? <laughs> well, what happened then? What kind of work uh, did he want you to do? Well, I went to work there. I was uh, shooting off the dynamite in the mine. Mm -hmm. And uh, the job... Uh, I didn't like the job too much. Uh, no, Why, you know. were you connected with the dynamite? No, I, I set off the explosive charges, and I, uh, I didn't like it. It uh, didn't look too good. And... Oh, with that kind of a job, you can get to the top in a hurry. <laughs> I, I quit that. And I... what finally happened? Well, I, I quit, and I uh, told my wife. My wife plays the piano, you know. She's very good. In the mine? No, no. <laughs> and I told her that uh, perhaps we could uh, go to New Orleans or someplace, and... Uh, we could uh, play the piano t together as a team, you know. It looked like a pretty good deal. So we went down to New Orleans on the, with that in mind. And? Well, we... What uh, happened down there in the bayou? Well, we, we didn't do too good uh, down there. It's sad. Uh, she was doing all right. I was having a little trouble myself. I wasn't doing so good. Why was that? Well, I didn't know how to play the piano. <laughs> but, uh... No, no, really, really... You mean you had a job as a piano player and you couldn't play the piano? Well, we never got the I first job. I told you job. to run for president, didn't I? <laughs> no, I, I really, I intended to do the right thing. I was going to learn how to play and... Uh... Oh, sure, you could have picked it up overnight. It's not as good. <laughs> well, it's been enlightening talking to you two. I'd like to continue, but now it's time to play You Bet Your Life. Now, uh, you, you run your $20 into more than our other couples, and you'll get a chance at the $1,000 question. I can't tell you how much you have to win, but uh, George is going to remind our listeners. The gold prospector and his partner lead with $200. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected barbershop ballads as your category. And after that piano playing you did in New Orleans, you ought to be pretty good at this. Here's your first question. How much will you go for? Uh, we'll go for uh, 15 Okay. All right, what is the name of this old-time favorite? Play, Jerry. No, no, Strawberry Blonde. Strawberry Blonde is right. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> you now have $35. Jordan, you got $35, and how much are you going to bet this time, my lad? Uh, let's go uh, for... How much do we have? 35. You have 35. 35. Uh, 34.99. Why don't you get a hold of yourself, girl? <laughs> <laughs> 30, 30, uh, how much is it? Thirty-four, thirty-four, ninety-eight. We'll save two cents. You're saving two cents. Two okay, cents. here Thirty-four, we go. ninety-eight. Right. Give me the title of this song, Mr. Fielding. Can't you hear me calling Carolina? Can't you hear me calling Carolina? You have now climbed to sixty-nine dollars and ninety-eight cents. Here's your third question. Uh, how much are you going to bet? Sixty-nine ninety-seven. That all right with you? Uh, that okay. Okay. Let's see if you can identify this one. Play, Jerry. Moonlight Bay. Moonlight Bay is right. You've now climbed to one hundred thirty-nine dollars ninety-five cents. It's, it, it's a good thing this fellow didn't Shouldn't take the piano lessons. Up. We'll go for all of it. All of it. All, all of it. it. All right. It's your last chance to beat the other couples. You're going to go for all of it. What is the name of this song? Meet me tonight in dreamland. Meet me tonight in dreamland is right. Put it there. I'll give you a good kiss. Okay. 
What about me? Woo! And before you go away, you wound up with two hundred seventy-nine dollars and ninety cents. Well, pretty good. Thank you. Which means? Oh yes, the results. Benjamin, on the ball here. Huh? <laughs> and that not daydreaming. Hey, kids, that means that you, too, get a chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question in just one minute. Yes. When you drive your car to a DeSoto Plymouth dealer for service, you can be sure of this. You'll get friendly service, courteous service, and you'll get the kind of service that will mean many extra miles of top performance from your car at a price that's fair. You see, the mechanics at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers are skilled men, master technicians, with years of on-the-job experience. What's more, these DeSoto Plymouth dealer mechanics get regular periodic training in the latest factory methods, so they're always up on the latest and best methods of servicing your car. They have the most modern tools and equipment to work with, helping them to do a better job faster, which means a real saving to you. And if your car should ever need them, your DeSoto Plymouth dealer has ready access to the correct factory-designed and approved parts. So, for friendly, courteous, efficient service for your car, it will pay you to drive in at the famous sign of better service, the friendly sign of a DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Well, there comes Mr. O'Brien and his partner, the winning couple, Groucho, all set for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question. Right back. Back again. Well, here you are, my lad and lassie. Here we go for a thousand dollars. I'll give you fifteen seconds to decide on a single answer between you. Think carefully, and please, no help in the audience. Here it is. One of Great Britain's most important institutions is known as the Old Lady of Threadneedle Street. It was founded in 1694. For a thousand dollars, what is the Old Lady of Threadneedle Street? <laughs> What's the answer you two have decided on? Cabinet or Prime Minister or something? No, I'm sorry. It's the Bank of England. Oh. Correct answer is the Bank of England, so that means the big question next week will be worth $1,500. Well, you lost the big money, but how much did they win the quiz, George? Well, they won $279.90 in the quiz. Well, congratulations and thanks to both of you and to all of our contestants on the show tonight. Thank you, Mr. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at the same time for the Groucho Marx Show, when the big question will be worth $1,500. And don't miss Groucho's television show, also presented by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks, and remember, see the DeSoto Fire Dome 8... Tomorrow. The DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America salute the American Automobile Association on the occasion of its golden jubilee for 50 years of service to the motorist and the nation. You Bet Your Life, transcribed from Hollywood, is produced by John Goodell, directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith, music by Jerry Fielding. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. (laughs) 